the expiration date on mineral water isn't about water going bad. Actually, no water can spoil, but the bottle can. Over time, it starts leaking some chemicals that aren't quite safe. The spike in the cap of a tube of ointment or cream is there so you can puncture the tiny foil seal. No need to grab a toothpick or try to use your fingernails to peel it off. Post-it notes are supposed to be peeled off from the side like you're turning the page in a book. Most of us tear them from the bottom, and that just creates a crease and makes the whole note less sticky. To prevent water from boiling over, just lay a wooden spoon across the rim of the pot. It only works for a little while, though. If the spoon's surface gets heated up to the boiling point, the bubbles will just foam up and around it. That's why metal spoons won't do. They heat up too quickly. Some erasers have two colors and textures, not for pen ink versus pencil lead, but for different types of paper. You're supposed to use the blue side to remove pencil marks from heavy grades of paper. Most people use bobby pins upside down. The zigzagged part goes closer to your scalp. The texture keeps the hair and pin in place much better. And give your pins a spritz of hairspray before putting them in. They'll grip better. Ever notice the tiny second hole in the lid of your coffee travel mug or to-go cup? It's there to control how smoothly the liquid flows out from the drink hole. Without it, the hot stuff would just glug out at you like milk from a jug. It also lets the steam escape so the high temperature and built-up pressure don't melt the lid or send it shooting off. Go check your box of aluminum foil. Does it have push-in tabs on the sides? They're there to keep the roll in place as you pull some foil out. Now flip a stapler upside down. See the metal plate on the bottom? You can turn it to get temporary staples, ones whose pins are bent outward and are easier to take out. Speaking of flipping stuff, do it with a salt jar. Nah, you should have closed the lid first. Now you've got salt all over the place. Okay, now you've done it. Look at the bottom of the jar. See the ribs on it? If you take another jar, say with pepper in it, and rub the bottoms of the two jars against each other, the salt will pour out evenly without you having to shake it vigorously. Same works with pepper, too. It wasn't their original purpose, but you can use soda can tabs to hang hangers on other hangers. By the way, the hole in the tab is there to put straws through and keep them in place. Post-it notes are supposed to be peeled off from the side like you're turning the page in a book. Most of us tear them from the bottom, and that just creates a crease and makes the whole note less sticky. The hole in your spaghetti spoon helps you measure the perfect portion. It's just enough for one person. Multiply that by however many people you're serving. Or maybe you just like to pig out on pasta. Hey, I'm not judgmental. Does the audio jack in your headphones have one, two, or three stripes? One band means your headphones just play sound, two mean stereo sound, and three mean the headphones also have a microphone. To prevent water from boiling over, just lay a wooden spoon across the rim of the pot. It only works for a little while, though. If the spoon's surface gets heated up to boiling point, the bubbles will just foam up and around it. That's why metal spoons won't do. They heat up too quickly. Silica gel packets can absorb up to 50% of the humidity in a confined space, so use them around the house. Tape one to the lid of a container of dry goods, be it dog treats, breadcrumbs, cookies, you name it. Throw one in each of your dresser drawers. Just make sure they don't get accidentally eaten. Most people use bobby pins upside down. The zigzag part goes closer to your scalp. The texture keeps the hair and pin in place much better. Bubble wrap was originally created as wallpaper that would be easy to clean. But the decor idea didn't take off, so they found a new use for it. Now they help cushion items during shipping. And they pop so nicely, of course. Hey, just ask my dog! All crackers and some cookies have holes to make sure the final product has the right texture. These teeny tiny holes allow steam to escape, so your crackers and cookies wouldn't snap. If it weren't for these holes, also known as dockers, steam would build up inside the tree. And the final result might have been scrumptious, but it would have been rather oddly shaped. The scalloped edges on Ritz crackers are there so you can roll the cracker over your cheese so that you get the perfect sized piece to sit on top. It works for softish cheese only. Don't try to cut some parmesan like this. Cheesily speaking, <laughs> you probably grate your cheese with a cutting board or a plate underneath the box grating. Try a more convenient method. Flip the box grater and lie it on the side. 
This way, you get the finest shreds of cheese, and it's mess-free. PVA glue doesn't stick inside the bottle because it contains long molecules, such as polymers and water. Once you squeeze the glue out, the water trapped inside evaporates, leaving only sticky polymers. Super glue doesn't stick inside the bottle because of a special chemical that hardens when it hits water vapor. So the glue doesn't stick because the container keeps water out. The bread goes stale just because it loses moisture. When you add water to the flour, it changes texture, and the starch molecules get pretty disorganized. Hey, I can relate. That's why bread is soft and fluffy when it's freshly made. But the more it cools down, the more water it loses. Starch molecules get their original crystallized state back. Also, recrystallization happens way faster in the fridge. The sole of your sneakers, and even the tires of your car, are just one huge molecule. It's because when rubber is vulcanized, all the molecules become connected through the sulfur. So they turn into one, but a really large molecule. Your jeans are blue on the outside and white on the inside because of a smart way to weave the fabric. The warp thread is dyed, while the weft thread has no color, it's just white. This way, manufacturers reduce the amount of dye needed for each piece of clothing. By the way, most jeans are blue because they were originally dyed with indigo dye with a rich blue tint. This dye was picked for the way it interacted with cotton. When the cotton is heated, most dyes just penetrate it, but indigo dye stays attached to the surface. As a result, each time people wash their jeans, the dye molecules escape the fabric, leaving a unique pattern on each garment. Today, manufacturers use synthetic indigo dye. Bananas have thick skin to keep insects away. However, it gets thinner as the fruit ripens. Once the banana is ripe, it starts getting water from its skin. Birds and animals can also tear the thin skin easily. Hey, smart move, Mother Nature! The public toilets tend to be U-shaped for hygienic reasons. This way, anyone who wants to use it is less likely to get in contact with ceramic, normally swarming with germs. The bottled water has an expiration date. However, the water itself doesn't go bad. The problem is about the bottle. The plastic starts releasing chemicals over time, so the water gets contaminated. You can't drink it anymore. Glass bottled water has an almost indefinite shelf life. Still, some criteria, as changes in room temperature, may lead to a slow increase of bacteria in water, so it might go bad too. If all else fails, try drinking it from the faucet. Who would have thought? Fresh water. Now here's a trick. Instead of putting the box grater vertically on top of a plate, put it horizontally, with no plate underneath, of course. This way, you won't risk scraping your knuckles because only your fingertips will eventually touch the grater when you reach the end of the process. Also, it gives the grater more stability, when otherwise you'd have to balance the grater or even hold it in the air with the other hand. When you're done, or when there's just too much grated stuff on the bottom wall of the grater, simply turn it on its side to pour the contents into the bowl or plate. Flowers in a vase would stay fresher for longer if not for the bacteria that breed in the water. Since copper has some antibacterial properties, dropping a penny into the water will help keep the microbes at bay and let you enjoy your flowers for that little bit longer. An easy way to check if your bed linen has dried completely is to put a small mirror in between the layers for about 5 minutes. If the mirror has steamed up when you pick it up, it means the sheets are still a bit damp. Let them dry until the mirror stops getting cloudy. A damp bed is a lovely breeding ground for fungi and bacteria. Okay, I'm in. If you have a not very healthy habit of eating in front of your computer, you'll be surprised at how much crumbs and grime there is inside your keyboard. Now, you can just turn it over and shake it vigorously, of course, but that's not very good for any piece of tech, you know. So instead, take a post-it note and run its sticky part over the keyboard. It will collect the little pieces of trash like magic. Even a better way to do it, though, is to take a slime and stick it to the keyboard, then take it away, squeeze it, and stick again in another part. The slime will fill the entire space between the keys, and its sticky properties will let it gather every little bit of garbage. Separating egg yolks from whites is easier using a plastic bottle. Break the necessary number of eggs into a bowl, and then take an empty plastic bottle and squeeze it. Hold the bottle over the yolk and release. 
it'll pull in air and the yolk together, leaving the white in the bowl. Repeat with the rest of the yolks and you're done! And that's no yolk! <laughs> if you're tired of spitting out the stones when eating cherries or want to make a cherry pie, push the stones out with a straw. Also, many garlic presses have a special tool on their handle that can be used exactly for that. Cleaning a blender can be a nuisance if you do it manually. Instead, fill it with hot water and add some liquid soap or detergent, then run it for about 10 seconds. Rinse it afterwards, and it's clean. Plaster walls can crumble, flake, and spread dust all over the floor when you hammer nails into it. Cut a strip of masking tape and stick it to the place you want to hammer a nail in. The tape won't let the plaster crack and crumble, leaving the hole neat and clean. Small scratches and dents on wooden furniture can be removed with some toothpaste or a walnut. For toothpaste, rub a pea-sized amount of it into the scratch until it's gone, then wipe the leftovers with a damp cloth. For a walnut, take a half of that brain-shaped nut and rub it into the dent. Then rub the area with your fingers and buff it with a soft cloth. This will help the wood absorb the oil from the nut, making the scratch sealed and gone. The sticky residue on jars left after you remove the stickers won't be easily removed by water and detergent. So, take some vegetable oil instead. Soak a cotton pad in it and wipe the sticky surface. Let it sit for a while and then wash the oil away together with the residue. If you can't comfortably reach the wick of a candle with a lighter, hey, take a stick of spaghetti. Light up its end and you'll get a burning stick that's easy to use for hard-to-reach places. Now, next time your razor blade's getting dull, try rubbing it backwards on a pair of jeans for regular upkeep. Not while you're wearing them, of course. Make sure you keep the blades dry, too, or even kept in mineral oil. That'll stop them from rusting. Keep all those jelly, ketchup, peanut butter, and mayo fresher for longer in your fridge by turning the contents upside down. This creates a partial vacuum inside the container, helping prevent mold growth. Storing ice cream upside down will prevent freezer burn, too. To bring your permanent marker back to life, simply put a few drops of rubbing alcohol into the felt material inside and shake. Once the felt absorbs the rubbing alcohol for a couple of minutes, the marker will be almost as good as new. Now, don't keep throwing away lettuce that goes black too quickly. Covering it with a dry paper towel and then placing it in an airtight container will help it keep fresher for much longer. This goes for any leafy greens you've got leftovers of. That sharpish bit sticking out of the cap of your favorite cream is there for a reason. These tubes are usually sealed with foil, so unless you love breaking your nails trying to open them, just flip the cap over and push. Your bobby pins might not stay in place if the grooves aren't facing the right way. They should always be on the bottom, close to your head. Still coming loose? Well, put a squeeze of hairspray right onto the bobby pin before you put it in your hair. Now, your cotton rounds pack has those strings on it, so you can hang it on a handy hook in the bathroom. But there's no need to loosen and tighten it back up every time. Check out the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear it open carefully, and you're good to go. Two zips too much? Maybe, but they come in handy as a clever anti-theft device. Just lock them together. Now no one can open your backpack. Don't have a lock on you? You can also tie them together with some string, or even just a paper clip. Anything to slow those pickpockets down. That tiny little button on the back of a shirt collar is used to hold your tie in place. Hey, you don't want your tie trying to escape back there. Shoe manufacturers care about their customers, so most running shoes now have a special anti-blister system pre-installed. Sounds intense, but it's basically just that extra hole on top of your sneakers. Make a loop with the extra hole, inserting the lace backward. Cross your laces and put them through the loops. Now pull the laces down to lock your foot in place. Now run. Yeah, go ahead. Car headrests are all about comfort, and detachable headrests are all about safety. If you pull the headrest out, you'll see two sturdy metal bars. If you ever get locked or trapped in your car, you can use the bars to smash the window and get out. You've probably noticed that train and bus seats are covered in fabrics with weird patterns. Have any idea why? Well, they use these patterns to cover any germs and stains on the seats. The brighter the color and the more patterned it is, 
the harder it will be for passengers to notice any stains and get grossed out. Also, the patterns are usually so ugly that no one even wants to look at them for long enough to spot any stains. So yeah, the pattern is there to make you look away, and if you look, to make it less noticeable. No bus will ever have plain white seats, that's a guarantee. Just a few more bus-related questions to answer. Like, why don't buses have seat belts? Buses are overall way safer than cars, because they were designed this way. The idea behind this is called compartmentalization, meaning that the seats have high backs that absorb energy. The seats are also placed close to one another, so there's less space to move in case of an impact. Also, on a bus, the passengers sit pretty high off the ground, and in case of a collision, the force is absorbed by the bus's deck and not by the people inside. On top of that, a bus is way heavier than most other vehicles, and even if there is a collision, it distributes the force way differently than a regular car. Due to its weight, a lot of force is absorbed, and bus passengers don't experience much crush force. So, small and light buses that can't distribute the force as well actually do require seatbelts. And we have to remember that buses drive slowly, which minimizes the risk of an accident overall. We all know that school buses are yellow, but why? It's for visibility reasons. Yellow is one of the most easily recognized colors, and for a human eye, yellow is even more visible than, say, red. So, school buses are yellow to make them more distinctive. Also, yellow is visible in the dark, in fog, and on a rainy day. Actually, the color of the bus isn't really a true yellow. It also has a hint of orange. This shade even has an official name, National School Bus Glossy Yellow. By the way, taxi cabs are yellow for the same reason, to be more visible in any weather conditions. Also, buses have huge steering wheels, and I finally learned why. Buses are bigger than regular cars, and they're also way heavier. So it's harder to turn a bus around, and way more strength is required to do so than when you drive a car. A bigger steering wheel that has a bigger radius allows the driver to turn the vehicle more easily, and it requires less force than if the wheel were smaller. Trucks have big steering wheels for the same reason. But have you seen those stuffed toys that some trucks have attached in front of them? Turns out, it's just a way for truck drivers to customize their vehicles. It's like a mascot that speaks about the truck or the driver. It's also a way to communicate to the world that the truck driver isn't all scary and tough, but a soft and harmless person that you shouldn't be afraid of. At least, that's how some truck drivers explain it. In Asia, there's also a belief that road accidents are caused by ghosts, and hanging toys are a way to distract the ghosts from causing harm to the truck. Ever been on a road trip? If you're not the driver, all you have to do is just sit in one place and do basically nothing for hours. Doesn't sound like a hard task, but some people find it terribly exhausting. And because of this, they resent road trips. Why do they get so tired? Well, sitting in a car isn't like sitting in a chair. The brain doesn't relax. Instead, it controls everything that's going on, accounting for movements and making sure that you maintain the right posture. Your brain is constantly working, exchanging bits of information with your muscles, so your body is working. Some people get tired because of this. If you aren't doing much, it doesn't mean that your body isn't doing much. Train rides are way more tolerable because trains don't stop or change speeds as often as cars do. So the body is more relaxed and train trips are way more tolerable for people who aren't fans of road trips. Another mystery is why it's way harder to stand still in the same spot for 30 minutes in comparison to, for example, walking for 30 minutes. Again, it sounds like you're not doing anything when you're standing. So why is it so tiring? Well, standing is a pretty hard task for your body. When standing, the muscles in your legs work very hard to support the mass of your whole body. If you're standing, there are not many muscles working, and only a few of them have to do all the work. When walking, there are more muscles working at the same time, so it's easier. Also, when standing, both of your legs are working without stopping. But when walking, each of them gets a tiny break each time you step using the other leg. Why is it that the same book can have different covers? There are several reasons for this. First, the cover may vary because of the target audience. An edition of a book that is being marketed to older people is usually different from the edition aimed at younger people. 
with the one for younger people usually being brighter and cuter. The cover can also depend on the country the book is being sold in, trying to attract as many buyers as possible based on the tastes of the population. Next, books vary from edition to edition. At first, a book is printed in hardcover in small quantities to see how it'll do on the market. If the book is a relative success, there is another edition printed, often in trade paperback. The design of the cover is usually updated with every edition. Also, if a book has a movie based on it, there is usually another edition that follows. This edition will take advantage of the movie and use a movie scene as the cover, making it recognizable for people who saw and liked the movie and encouraging them to buy a copy of the book. Most books are printed on yellowish paper, and few have plain white pages. But why is that? Unless it's a mass-market paperback edition, with paper that's the same quality as a newspaper, meaning bad. It's done with good quality paper. Don't let the yellow hue confuse you. It's usually called cream, and it's a preference for any book because it's less tiring on the reader's eyes. The plain white paper is bleached, and it reflects a lot of light, so it can be exhausting to read for a long time. So, that yellowish paper is the best paper, and publishers regularly use it. Have you ever wondered why Ritz crackers have ridges? You can use them as a safe knife for cheese and similar soft products like cucumber, ham, and so on. Just roll the cracker as if it were a tiny pizza cutter and press. Now all the ingredients fit on your cracker perfectly. Enjoy your snack. Do you have one of those old baking trays that you never use but still hesitate to throw away? Good news! You can recycle it and make a gorgeous frame for a painting or a picture. There are two ways to do so. Degrease the surface of your tray and attach the image to the bottom. In this case, the frame will stick forward. Or you can flip the tray upside down and the edges will hide behind. Hang this construction on a wall or put it on a shelf. And feel free to use metal paint to give your frame an appropriate color. An old cutting board can make a great frame for a mirror. Use double-sided tape to attach a matching mirror to the surface of your board. Make sure the mirror is firmly glued. And now you can hang it on a wall using the board's handle, or put it on a cabinet and lean it on a wall. Don't forget to wash and dry the cutting board before beginning this DIY. We don't want the mirror to smell fishy. Another superpower of a cutting board is keeping wires tangle-free. Wrap some string lights around an old wooden cutting board and put it in your closet. The next holiday season, you'll have it completely untangled. A hair dryer can make a great mini vacuum cleaner when you need an emergency cleaning. Cut a plastic bottle and dry it. Put a layer of fabric on the fan of your hair dryer. Then place the fan in the plastic bottle bottom portion. Fix the bottle and attach it to the hairdryer using a plaster. Turn it on and you're ready to clean the mess. You can use a retro gas stove grate to hang your indoor plants. Attach it to the wall with screws or nails. Now you're ready to hang flower pots, string lights, and any other decor items. If the color of your stove grate doesn't match the interior, you can always fix this using spray paint. Chopsticks and wooden ice cream sticks can also turn into a beautiful panel that will decorate your interior. Glue the edges together to create a grid. You can also put together your name or any other word you want out of sticks. Then wrap the grid around with string lights and enjoy your decor. Don't throw away wrinkled kitchen foil. It can help to sparkle up your day. Crumple identical foil balls and glue them over a glass, a mirror frame, or even a book, and your life will immediately become more glamorous. If you need to sharpen your dull scissors, take aluminum foil and crunch it up into a ball. Sharpen the edges of the scissors right on that ball of foil. To speed up your ironing routine, place sheets of tin foil under your ironing board, and then put the cover back on. The tin foil will reflect the heat. The iron will get hotter and will do the job much faster. If you struggle to organize all your jewelry and lose your favorite items from time to time, use a sponge to store it. 
Just make a few cuts and put your shiny little friends inside these cuts. They will sit firmly in the sponge and won't fall out or mix. You can also use a sponge to create an organizer for your jewelry. Find a cute box, cut your sponge into matching pieces, and put them inside the box. Use glue or tape to attach the sponge to the box and enjoy your new jewelry casket. You can easily make chocolate-filled strawberries at home. Take a plastic syringe, fill it with chocolate paste, remove the leaves from a strawberry, and stick the syringe into the hole from which the sprig usually sticks out. Squeeze chocolate into the berry, and it's ready. You can use the same technique when you bake eclairs, apples, or want to leave a chocolate note on a pancake to surprise your significant other in the morning. Wooden pants hangers with metal clips can be handy when it comes to hanging curtains or a backdrop for your photo shoot. If you need to hang curtains but don't have any special hooks, attach several plants hangers along the entire length of the curtains and then hang this construction on a ledge. An old metal tea jar serves as a mini shelf for small things in your kitchen. Apply double-sided tape to the jar and stick it to the top corner of your cabinet. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. If you ever had problems with popping chocolates from the box, look at those little holes around them. They're there to help you. If you push a hole right next to the candy, it'll jump out easily. When you take a sip from a coffee cup with a lid, it decreases air pressure inside the cup, so air tries to get in. The tiny hole on the lid allows air to enter that way, so liquid can smoothly pour out the main hole. More on beverage lids. The small button on them let restaurant workers, and customers too, understand what's in a cup. Near each button, there's a name. Just look at which one is pushed down. The numbers on the fruit stickers tell you how exactly they were grown. If there are four digits and the first is four or three, the fruit has been sprayed with pesticides. If there are five digits and the first is nine, the fruit has been grown organically. If there are five digits and the first is eight, the fruit has been genetically modified. When you're on your way back to the car after bagging up everything you bought, use loops on a shopping cart to hang the bags. Now, softer items like bread, eggs, fruit, and veggies won't get squashed by the heavier goods. If you don't have anyone to hold the other end of your tape measure when you try to measure something, tap a nail on it. Now, simply hook your tape on it using the tiny hole all tape measures have. The square-shaped spoon that goes with a McFlurry helps to mix the ice cream toppings through the dessert. The spoon hooks directly to a machine and spins around. Padlocks that are used outside quickly get out of order because of rain. See this little hole in the bottom? It's made for pouring engine oil inside. Do this and the key will again turn in the lock without any difficulty. You keep banging the bottom of a glass ketchup jar, but nothing's coming out. Here's a little tip. Turn your ketchup bottle at an angle and tap on the middle of the neck. In many fast food restaurants, customers fill tiny folded paper cups to get a portion of ketchup or mustard. Here's the news. The cups are supposed to unfold and turn into small paper platters to hold a great deal more sauce. That little hole on the handle of a pot or a frying pan isn't just for hanging them on the wall. During cooking, put the end of your utensil in the hole, and it'll be propped over the pot to save your kitchen from extra mess. The blue or any other dark color bristles on your toothbrush are meant to remind you when it's time to get a new one. If you see that bristles have become pale, change the toothbrush or its head. An extra hole at the upper part of the sink has multiple hidden functions. First, in case someone forgets to close the tap, the water won't overflow and the bathroom won't get flooded. Second, thanks to that hole, the water drains faster as it gives an escape for the air, helping the water flow down. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save you from awkward situations, such as an undone fly. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. 
when you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Spoiled milk emits gases, like most foods when they go off. A classic plastic milk jug has a concave shape on one side. So when the gases expand inside the jug, it expands too, and the concave shape curves out. Also, if you want to save some milk for later and freeze it, the jug will expand when the milk gets solid as well, occupying more space in a jug. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. It also helps regulate the temperature. The bubbles keep the water hot, so you can enjoy a bath a bit longer. Anyway, it works for acrylic bathtubs only. Those made of metal lose heat really fast either way. Many cups and mugs have little grooves on the bottom on purpose. They're designed for washing machines. The grooves let the water flow and not spill over your feet when you take the cup out. Also, those grooves let the air flow so the cup doesn't crack even if the tea is scalding. A point on an ointment cap is there for a reason too. Most tubes are usually sealed with foil and it's better to avoid opening it with fingers unless you're ready to say goodbye to your nails. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. Escalator brushes aren't for keeping your shoes clean and polished. It might be tough to apply wax right on that brush while the escalator's on the move. It's for your safety. Brushes won't let you come close to the edge, so a long coat or boot-cut jeans won't end up in between the steps. All Tic Tac containers are designed to dispense one Tic Tac every time you open it. The lid has the same shape as the candy. Turn the container upside down, gently shake it, and slowly open it. You'll notice only one candy stuck between those lid grooves. So if you just open the container and shake it until five or even more candies fall into your mouth, it means you've been eating Tic Tacs wrong all this time. You open a bag of chips and find it half empty, or half full if you're an optimist. Frustrating, I know, but I figured it's not because the manufacturer wants to get more cash out of you. The extra air helps to protect your chips from any damage. If the bags were filled to the brim, you'd get chip dust instead of chips after their transportation. A raspberry-flavored ice pop is typically blue, not pink, or red, which both would be more obvious color choices. Well, imagine you're making a pack of popsicles. You can pick green for apple flavor, pineapple or lemon is yellow. There's strawberry, so it should be red. Cherry, well, red again. Watermelon, red. And now raspberry, yeah, red. But four reds are definitely way too many and people won't tell the difference between them easily. So at first, both strawberry and cherry flavors were red, but of different shades. The watermelon one was pink. They made the raspberry ones of a deep dark red dye. Then scientists proved that that dye might be dangerous, so it was banned. Blue was another free color option, but there's no blue fruit or berry except for blueberry. And it's not a very popular flavor. So manufacturers started to paint raspberry blue. Sometimes they call it blue raspberry, but it's just a lab thing that doesn't naturally exist. If you buy a clock or see a picture of it, it'll most likely show 1010 by default. The only reason behind it is that it just looks nice. You can see both hands and they don't overlap. Also, it's symmetrical and nice and it frames the 12. And finally, it makes a smiling shape that gives off a positive vibe. Mattresses usually have those decorative stitching patterns on them. Mattress manufacturers make a limited number of different mattresses. And the only way to make them look different is to come up with a fancy stitching pattern. Two mattresses of different companies might be the exact same quality, but cost differently. Most people will never know it and will decide that different patterns mean something in terms of quality. So when shopping, don't mind the pattern at all. Cheese has holes. In most types, they're small, but they can also be huge. Cheese is made by adding bacteria to milk, and the holes are the result of it. Those bacteria consume lactic acid and release little gas bubbles. They're trapped in the cheese, and then they pop, forming those little holes. The size of holes depends on the production temperature and its acidity. 
Swiss cheese has extra large holes. It's made at a temperature of around 120 degrees Fahrenheit and incubated at 70 degrees Fahrenheit for 5 to 7 days. So the cheese is very soft and the bubbles grow especially big. All coins have ridges, but have you ever wondered why? At first, all coins were linked to a silver standard. The amount of silver used in a coin was proportionate to the value of the coin. So, a $1 coin had way more actual silver in it than, say, a quarter. The edges were made reeded for security reasons. Once, it was a coin element that made a coin harder to reciprocate. It also prevented another kind of fraud. People would shave off a bit of metal from the edges of coins. It would be just a little so that no one would notice the difference. But if you did it to many coins, you'd get enough precious metals to sell. Reeded edges made it impossible. If someone tried to shave them off, the ridge would become smooth, and it'd be obvious to anyone that a coin had been tampered with. Nickels and pennies didn't have them because they were made of inexpensive metals, so there was no sense in protecting them. Now, no one makes coins out of silver, but the ridges are still there. When the government started to produce new coins, they didn't see a point in changing the coin-making equipment, and they just kept the reeded edges. If you ever played billiards, you must know that green table well. The game originated around the 14th century, five centuries before basketball. Back then, folks didn't have pool tables, of course. Instead, they were playing it outside on the green lawn. Later, people moved the game indoors so they could play it even when it was raining. And they kept the nostalgic green to give it some lawn vibes. Medical workers usually wear a uniform that is a shade of blue or green. There's a reason for it. Before the 20th century, they were wearing their regular clothes, even when performing surgery. With the development of medicine, people started to pay more attention to matters of sterileness, so they started to wear a uniform, and at first, it was white to signify purity. The problem was that some stains were very hard to wash off from the white uniform the color white would become greenish. So, it made sense to make the uniform green or blue. Besides, surgeons mostly focus on red colors during work. Blue and green are exactly the opposite side of the spectrum. So, if everything else is greenish blue, the red becomes even more distinctive. Wash your hands with plain white soap and you'll see some white foam. Wash them with a blue, red, yellow, green, whatever color, and the foam is still white. The reason for it is scattered light. Any light rays that falls on an object either get absorbed or are reflected back. Things that absorb all colors appear black. Those that reflect all colors are white. A red bar of soap is red because only the red color reflects back, and the other colors are absorbed. But once you produce some foam, it's made of many little bubbles. Each of them scatters light in different directions, so it looks white. Do you see something when you rub your eyes? These colors and shapes are called phosphenes. The reason why you see them is that when you're rubbing, you increase the pressure in the eyeball and activate the neurons of the retina that process visual information. Once they're activated, your brain interprets it as if you see the light and it tries to actually see it. Ever wondered why you have black circles around your eyes when you're tired? The skin under the eyes is very thin, so the blood vessels are very close to the surface and you can see any difference easily. When you lack sleep, your skin gets paler and the blood vessels are even more visible. So, you can see those dark circles showing through the skin. Also, with age, your skin naturally gets thinner, so that's why older people tend to have dark circles. But if you're young, try to get more sleep, and they'll be gone. You say Germany, the Spanish say Alemania, and the Germans say Deutschland. And it sounds like three different countries, but it's just one. If someone's name is Olivia, she will be more or less of Olivia everywhere. So why do countries have different names in different languages? Countries have existed for a long time. Back when people from different countries couldn't communicate and spoke different languages, 
they'd refer to some territory the way they referred to it, never agreeing with other countries, and the name stuck. A German tribe called Alemanni once lived in what's now Switzerland. So I guess that's why the Spanish started to call the land Alemannia. Then the Germans were united and called themselves Deutschland. In English, the pronoun I is always capitalized. Even the linguists don't know for sure why it's so. At least yet. I comes from the German ish. During the time it evolved from ish to ich and later to I. Some theorize that a little I appeared to be too insignificant in a sentence, standing on its own, so it started to be capitalized to be more distinctive. If you've ever seen a behind-the-scenes video, you might have noticed that they click that clapperboard before each scene. This clap helps a lot at the stage of editing. The film and the audio are recorded separately, and when they're synchronized, the clapperboard makes that brief clap at the very beginning of a shot scene. And it's easier to find where the scene starts to add the audio. Another reason is to give more details on the filmed piece. They add information about the scene and take number, the filming date, the camera angle, and other important stuff to the clapperboard that makes it easier to go through hundreds of video pieces later.